Hello again everybody and welcome back to Let's Level Up. My name is Rick and today we're going to be looking at another indie board and card game that's actually made a lot of waves in the tabletop community thus far. I'm talking about Coup. Now this is based in the Resistance universe and if you haven't had a chance to look at our Resistance video, I strongly recommend you do. A Resistance is a great game. This is going to be published by Indie Board and Card and actually designed by Ricky Tata at La Mer Games. Now in this game we play um, kind of an ambiguous figure at a table and it's set within the resistance universe so of course we're talking corruption we're talking bribes we're talking theft we're talking all these things that allow us to basically lie to our friends um, and uh, this game coup is no difference there essentially we're going to be given two random roles at the beginning of the game which are actually going to be called influence and then we can use that influence to uh, perform a certain action on our turn now, at any point, if we score seven coins, we can attempt a coup on another player's influence and essentially kill off that influence. The last person standing at the table is going to win the coup. Um, overall, this game is a lot of fun. It involves a lot of social deduction uh, and a lot of bluffing and other mechanics that I think are really, really good. It also plays in about 10 minutes. This game is going to be great for anywhere between three to six players. I think probably best for four. You can play this with two players, but in my post thoughts, I'll kind of get into that. Um, so let's open up the box. Let's take a look, and I hope you guys like what you see. So Coup, and when you just look at the box of Coup, it can be a little deceiving, and the price can be a little deceiving as well. You get a lot of entertainment out of this little thing. And I think some sites online have this thing priced right around $10. So this is a very cheap game. Strongly recommend you next time you go into your local game store, ask them if they have Coup. And if they don't, ask them to get Coup because this game really is a lot of fun. Let's open up the box. Okay, so the components of Coup are really basic. And again, that's something that actually adds to its charm. The rule booklet for Coup is awesome. It is this little thing. It's about eight pages, seven pages, if you don't count the back. And um, it really is a good way to learn this really easy game. Um, every player is going to have a reference card, which they'll be able to uh, define what actions they can do and how you can block or challenge certain things. Every player is going to receive two roll cards at the start of the game, or as these are called, influence. And we'll get into the different types of roles right after this. Every player is also going to receive two coins. Now, coins are used as currency in this game, and it's going to allow us to uh, use certain actions from our card. For instance, at three, act uh, three coins, I can, uh, if I have the assassin role, or really doesn't matter if I have the role or not, and we'll get into more of that here in a second, but I can actually use three coins to assassinate somebody's uh, card. Now, this is going to essentially cause them to lose a card, and the winning condition is to be the last player with a card. So essentially, if you lose both of your influence or roll cards, you are out of the game and you have to sit up. At seven, you're actually going to be able to do something really interesting, and that's actually stage a coup. Now, stage a coup is an, essentially an assassination that can't be blocked, and it is a way for you to basically gain victory or take out a player's um, influence card uh, very fast. At 10 coins, you absolutely have to coup. Um, so this is a game where you're going to be reading other players' resources, and these are going to be public knowledge in front of everybody, um, but finding out exactly what they have in front of them and trying to guess what role they may have. This is also a game where you can absolutely lie outright about the role you have. For instance, I could do an assassination for three and not have the assassin card. Now, other players at the table may challenge me on that, knowing that they, the likelihood of me having an assassin card, it'd be very small because they have two assassin cards in their hand. Something to that effect. Um, this game is a game where uh, you're going to get to know your friends very well. <laughs> you may even lose a few when playing this game in the, in the right social circles. And if you are, you're playing coup correctly. This game, just like the Resistance, is one where you can bend the truth and manipulate others into believing or not believing um, what's going on at the table. So let's take a look at the different roles a little closer and then some of the actions that we can perform as well. 
So in Coup, each of these cards is going to have a particular role on it. And again, these cards are, in, uh, are referred to as influence or roles um, within the rule book. Every player is going to have two cards dealt to them after this deck is shuffled. There are three of each type of role or influence within the game. So there are three assassins, three contessas, three ambassadors, three dukes, and three captains. Each of these roles allows us to impunitively perform an action. Now, again, coup is about deceiving the players at the table. So it's possible for me to straight out lie and perform an action for a role that I don't possess in my hand. But be warned, doing so allows my opponents to call my bluff. If they're correct and I don't actually have the card, I have to lose one of my two precious influence cards. However, if they're wrong when they challenge, they have to lose one of their two influence cards. So essentially, if in my hand I have a Contessa and a Captain, and I say that I am going to use the Captain's ability to steal two coins, and somebody is challenging me on that, I can reveal the Captain, they have to lose an influence, and then I'll take this Captain put it back in the stack, give it a good shuffle, and then draw the top card. In this case, it'd be an ambassador. Now, let's talk about some of the actions and some what do these, these different roles mean. So, first and foremost, we have the assassin here. And the assassin can use an action to essentially assassinate somebody at the price of three coins. Contessa allows a player to block an assassination attempt. So if I assassinate the player across the table, and then this player has a Contessa, they can attempt to block that action. And again, I'm speaking like they have to have Contessa. This player may not have Contessa at all, and may attempt to block that action. And then the table can collectively decide whether or not they want to challenge the fact that they have a Contessa, or the fact that I even have an Assassin. Very interesting. The Ambassador allows us to take two cards from the deck, put them into our hand, and then discard two cards back to the deck. This allows us to refresh our hand and possibly get a roll that we may really need. The Duke allows us to take three coins from the Treasury, and the Captain allows us to steal two coins from a player. Now let's take a look at some of the other actions that we can do within this game. So the first action of the game, and these gray actions right here, are denoted because they cannot be blocked or challenged. Um, action is income, and you can take one coin from the, uh, from the supply. The next action is foreign aid, and allows you to take two coins from the supply. The third action is coup, and you pay seven coins, and then you choose a player to lose influence, which means, they, again, they lose a card. And then it gets into the special actions that each of our roles can do. So the Duke has the ability to tax, and he takes three coins from the supply. The Duke also has the ability to block foreign aid. So essentially, if somebody is trying to do foreign aid, and I have the Duke, I keep doing it again, <laughs> I can actually pretend I have the Duke if I don't, and choose the block foreign aid action, and then they would not get the two coins that they were trying to before. The next action or role we have is assassinate. Pay three coins and then choose a player to lose an influence. So this is actually quite a bit cheaper than the coup. However, assassinate again can be blocked by Contessa. Assassinate has no counter action. It has one primary purpose and that is to remove roles or influence from the table. The next card is an ambassador. And again, it allows us to exchange and the ambassador, basically we get two cards from the deck, uh, from the court deck, which is our main deck of uh, influence, and then we uh, put those two we don't want back in that deck. So essentially we take two, we'll have four, looking over those four, we'll pick the best two for the, uh, the situation, or one if I only have one influence remaining. Uh, it also allows us to block the stealing action, which is very important if people are trying to pretend to be the captain or have the captain card. The captain allows us to steal, and it allows us to take two coins from any player, and it can also block stealing as well. So you can block the stealing action if you have either the ambassador or the captain. Contessa allows us to block assassination. So the only surefire way to get rid 
of player's influence is via the coup. So setting up to play the coup is actually very easy. You put your coins in the middle, each player takes an action reference sheet, and then you take two coins along with that. You're gonna shuffle up the primary deck, or as they call it, the court deck, and then you're going to deal two cards to every player. And I'm gonna set up just for a three player game here. So let's see what roles I have. I have the captain and the ambassador here. Now I don't necessarily know that this player has the assassin and contessa, and then this player has the duke and the ambassador. So a sample of play. Uh, generally the winner of the last game is going to go first in coup. Um, if you're playing for the first time, choose just choose your own uh, who goes first condition, whichever your game group has decided on. Paper, rock, scissors, roll a dice. Um, whoever has actually deceived somebody <laughs> lately. Um, so again, on my turn, I get one action to pick. And remember, these are going to be face down. Nobody will know what cards I actually have. But I have the captain and I have the ambassador. So let's play this first round uh, pretty safe. Now, I've just given this player two chips because I have two, uh, two coins there as well. Sorry, not chips, but coins. Um, I'm gonna use the captain's ability to steal. Now this is a pretty aggressive action right out of the gate, but allows me to neutralize the coins that this player has and allows me to get two. Now I could have easily done four and eight, but that action could have been blocked. And since I actually have the captain, it gives me a pretty good chance that someone may challenge me and I can prove them wrong. So in that case, let's say player three here does decide to challenge me. They don't think I have the captain. What I would do is I would flip that card over and I would show them that I do in fact have the captain. Now this is gonna force that player since they, they, in, they unsuccessfully challenged me, they're gonna take one of these cards and let's say they wanna keep their assassin, they're gonna discard their Contessa and they'll just basically, or rather, lose their Contessa and they'll flip that up on their turn. So we know that there is a Contessa out there. I will actually take my assassin or my captain at that point, put it back into the deck, give it a shuffle. I'm sorry, I'm really lousily shuffling this, I apologize. And draw my next card, which in this case is a Contessa. So this player is going to take the four and eight action. And I'm sorry, they actually have the Duke. So they're gonna use the tax action and get three. Now I'm not gonna challenge on this. This player is definitely not gonna challenge because now they're feeling a little gun shy because now they're only down to one influence. And remember, if you lose your two influence, you are out of the game. This player does have an assassinate ability and they're gonna play it safe and then just get the one chip. Now I am going to decide to steal again. This time I'm gonna steal from this player. Now, knowing that I had the captain last turn, this is a pretty bold move. Any of these players can actually challenge me on this, and if they do, I would be forced to discard one of these cards. If they don't, I just got away with stealing two coins, and now I'm at six coins and very close to a coup. For argument's sake, let's say we are unchallenged in this attempt. Uh, this turn, this player is going to get three more coins, this turn, this player is going to attempt to take four and aid, but this player is going to block that action because they have the Duke. And now remember, the Duke can counter the four and aid action. So essentially it does not resolve and this player does not get any money. Now on the start of this turn, we're gonna play it safe and we're just going to take one coin and the game's gonna keep going around like this until somebody only has their cards remaining. Um, so whoever is the last person standing at the table is gonna win the game. Coup is a lot of fun, and I hope you guys follow me here in my afterthoughts. As you can tell, Coup is going to be a very fast-paced game, social deduction. This is a great game you can play um, with friends and family. This is a very rules-light game, so it's gonna be really easy to learn. And at the price, it's hard to beat uh, the just the entertainment value that you're going to get from this thing. I, I think of it more of resistance and love letter having a baby and they make coup. Um, I, I think that's a pretty good description of two games that kind of go into form this. 
Um, overall, it sounds it, it is it is a game of social deduction. So we're constantly essentially playing the players and not necessarily the game. The components to coup are very simple, very basic. If the artwork is actually something I found that was very good, um, and congratulations uh, to, to the designers of this, because I think the full art cards and the way that the cards are just a little taller than normal playing cards really kind of help things out. A couple recommendations I have though. Whenever you're setting up for coup, take the first card of the game or of the, of the deck and actually burn that and put it back into the deck. That'll help card counters from finding out exactly how many of what different types of influence are out there. Um, my only gripe with Coop, with Coop, uh, Coop <laughs> with the coup is that um, I find it a little, little too streamlined with two players. And really, in a multiplayer game, once it gets down to two players, it's generally over really fast, and it's hard to stop a player who gets momentum in that occasion. So if you can find a way to get it off into a, a Mexican standoff would be where you have three different players at the end, each with one influence, you're going to have a really great time. But I find the game's kind of lackluster when it just comes down to two players. Let me know what you think about Coup. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook or drop us a comment right here in this video. I hope you guys like this game. Again, for the price, it's going to be hard to find something that's going to give you as much fun and laughs as Coup will. Uh, hope you liked this video. As always, if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and most importantly, game on.